Hi, students. Let's continue on with our neuro lecture. The next one we're going to talk about, you do hear about it. Um, if you followed anything about the smart people in the world, which I don't, but a guy named Stephen Hawkins, who I don't know a lot about him, just a really, really smart scientist guy, I don't know, had this particular disease. Uh, he's since passed away from it, but it's a neurological disease. It's not real common, but you do hear about it. And I do want to present it to you. And it's called amyotropic lateral sclerosis. And that, uh, mm, I'm not even going to bust that down to try to figure that one out, but it's abbreviated ALS. Okay. And there it is, ALS. It's also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, which is this guy down here. And we'll talk about it here in just a second. And this is a really, really horrible, horrible neurological disease. And where the problem is, is a degeneration or a breakdown or a tear up <laughs> or destruction of the motor neurons or the motor nerves. Now, remember, motor means movement. And if you want your muscles here to move, then a motor neuron, a neuron, a nerve, right here in this picture here, has to talk to this muscle. It's not a sensory nerve, it's a motor nerve. And if you have that motor neuron and you have acetylcholine and you have it binding to receptor sites on the muscles, then the muscles will, will work for you. But this is a degeneration in this motor neuron. It's not a degeneration in the muscle. It's a degeneration of the nerve that supplies the muscle. So here is an ALS nerve right here. And you can clearly see if you want to look at here was normal and here's a degeneration of that nerve. Now it's the nerve that's the problem. And if the nerve can't work to the muscle, of course, the muscle, if you look at it, here's going to atrophy. And that means to uh, just decrease in size because it can't be used. Okay. So all the muscles all over the body will decrease in size and they won't be able to work. Now, but it starts out as the motor neuron problem. Now, what is ALS? Well, this is a sad, sad disease because you will die from it. And it's a degeneration of the motor neurons all over the body. And all motor neurons that assist the client with movement will degenerate or destroy until the client can't do anything for himself. He will not be able to move. So all of these muscles, because the nerve, all nerve, motor neurons all over the body are bad, then the muscles will not be able to function. It does not affect the sensory neuron, so he can still see, hear, taste, touch, uh, or t feel. And his thoughts or feelings or intelligence is not affected. It's just his ability to move. So a client will feel an itch, but he can't scratch it. He will feel hungry, but he can't pick up food to chew it or swallow it. He will want to hug his children, won't be able to. He will want to get up and walk around, but won't be able to. He will want to turn over in bed because he feels that his butt is sore, but he won't be able to. He will feel the need to cough up secretions, but won't be able to. He will want to take a breath, but won't be able to. Do you get the gist of this? This is a death sentence, and he will die in a few years of respiratory complications because you're not going to be able to breathe. You're not going to be able to cough and deep breathe. You're not going to be able to, to cough up anything. And there is a story right down here. A male client who was diagnosed with ALS knew that he was going to have this horrible disease and eventually end up bedridden and know that it's all happening because it doesn't affect your intelligence, your ability to think. It just affects your ability to move. And he just went out in the backyard and shot himself in the head to kill himself to prevent going through the inevitable death of this disease. 
Now you say, why do you call this Lou Gehrig's disease? Well, here's Lou Gehrig. And he was a professional baseball player. And he made his living running the bases. He made his living baseball moving. He ran around the bases. He threw the baseball. He caught the ball. He swung the bat. And he got this ALS. And he, that disease took all of that away from him until he died from this disease at age 38. And that's why we call it Lou Gehrig's disease. Okay, now, <clears throat> remember these are neurological problems. Okay, recognize the cues of ALS. Well, the beginnings of this is the client will notice he can't hold on to items because of weakness of the muscles in the hands and the arms. So he keeps dropping things. Now, remember, it's not a muscle problem. It's the nerves, the motor nerves. So let's say motor nerves that go to those muscles. And if your motor nerves aren't working, then the muscle ain't going to work. And he is not going to be able to hold on to his coffee. He's not going to be able to hold on to his pencil. He's not going to be able to hold on to his fork, spoon, or knife. He's not going to be able to hold on to a cigarette. If he smokes, he'll just drop. He's got the dropsies. He's just going to drop everything. Then... Because it affects the motor nerves, he's going to have dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, dysarthria, difficulty forming his, getting his words out of his mouth, because that takes muscles of your face to speak. He will eventually be bedridden and will probably die within five years of the diagnosis from respiratory infection and respiratory failure. And that's just horrible, 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 horrible. Okay. But it's not a muscle problem. It's a motor nerve problem that affects, that talks to the muscle. Now, this is true here, but this is true, period. Uh, hopefully, you have heard of a living will or advanced directives. And this is a piece of paper. And people with ALS should fill this out in advance before they get too far in their disease. But everybody should fill one out. Everybody, even if you're not sick. And... If you remember anything about a living will, it's a piece of paper. You do not have to go to an attorney. It does have to be witnessed, though, but not by the nurse, but by, you know, a notary public or something. And it's a piece of paper. And it says here, let me see. Um, a declaration made this blank day of blank. I, uh, Lou Gehrig, uh, willfully and voluntarily make known my desire that my dying may not be artificially prolonged set forth below and I do hereby declare if at any time I'm incapacitated well anyway to 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 make it's a piece of paper that says you in your sound mind when you know what's going on in the event ever that you have a terminal disease and you cannot speak for yourself you cannot write for yourself. You cannot tell people what you want. Either you're unconscious, you're in a coma, you can't form the words like a Lou Gehrig's patient would. You can't write the words, but you're going to die from this disease. Then what do you want to have happen to you? Now, I'll tell you me. I've got one filled out. I don't have these diseases. My husband has one. You need to have one, too. Now, put that to the side. If I can tell you what I do want and don't want, then you'll listen to what I say to you, okay? But this is in the event that I can't tell you and I have a terminal disease, okay? Here's what Livingston says. On, I do not, if I have a terminal disease and I cannot speak for myself, this paper will speak for me. And it will say, I do not want a feeding tube because that will just prolong my life and my suffering. I do not want IV fluids because that will just prolong my suffering in my life. I do not want a ventilator. Don't put me on a breathing machine because that's going to prolong my life and prolong my suffering. Just give me pain medicine for my comfort and let me pass away. Okay, that's my choice. And if you're my nurse, you need to follow that. And the doctor needs to follow that. Okay, 
Uh, some people want, if they can't speak for themselves, they want everything done. Well, that's their, their prerogative. But you fill this out, this piece of paper in advance when you have your sound mind about you and you can tell people what you want. I don't want to suffer. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And I don't want to be prolonged with that. And as a nurse, through my years of working on the floor, I've seen people suffer and families fight over putting feeding tubes in them. And the patient can't say because patients unconscious or so sick. They, you know, and this takes the family's decisions out of it this is what the patient wanted and that's a blessing to have that filled out because it's what the patient wants there's also in here right in here on a on a living will you can appoint someone to speak for you so down here in this piece of paper you can appoint a person that you know and trust who can be your health care surrogate or your health care proxy and someone who can speak for you if you can't. And it would be someone who knows your wishes and who would speak on behalf of you for you, not for himself, but for you. My healthcare surrogate is my husband, Jeffrey Livingston. He knows what I want and don't want if I can't speak for myself and I'm at the end of, if I'm a terminal disease. He knows that I just want to go ahead and pass away. He knows that. And I know that of him too. So I'm his healthcare proxy or his healthcare surrogate. And this is beautiful document that anybody should have because you never not not just ALS, but you know, my my friend who died of multiple sclerosis, she she got to the point where she couldn't talk. And her mind was affected too. She didn't have this piece of paper. Her family had to make decisions for her. And that was very painful. Uh, you never know when driving home from school or work, if you're in a head-on collision and you're deemed brain dead, never to be alive again as far as your brain is concerned. This piece of paper will speak for you because if you're brain dead, you're not going to recover. And I don't put me on a breathing machine and please don't put a feeding tube in me and prolong my life. Don't do it. But everybody should have a living will, especially someone with ALS, because he will get to the point where he cannot speak for himself. And I want to know what you want and don't want. OK, but that's true of any anybody, anytime you need this piece of paper, because you never know what can happen to you. OK, so what's the nurse to do? Well, if we just just look at these pictures real quick here. I got them off the Internet. And I assume I know what I'm looking at. But this act like these people have ALS. And if you look there, it looks like pretty much that he can't move. I don't think she can move that well. They've both been traped. Both of them. She's on a machine. She's on a ventilator. He's not right now. But he's got a trach, so we could probably maybe connect him at night to a ventilator and have him breathe or at least suction out his airway because I don't think he can cough up anything. Uh, obviously, she wanted a ventilator. See, I don't want that. I don't want it. She can't move either. Now, she's got this adaptive device in her mouth. Now, obviously, that's to help point to things or help her type on a computer. I don't know what it is, but uh, she can still hold it in her mouth, but eventually... She won't be able to do that. Um, this little girl up here is trying to kiss her daddy or her uncle or whoever. But uh, I'm surprised he can still smile. But he can't reach for her. He can't. He can't because his motor neurons are destroyed. So what's the nurse to do? Well, if you got somebody who has this ALS, they're probably going to be in your long-term care center or at home in your home health. You're going to assess the client's ability to perform tasks. Now, just remember, when you get ALS, all of the nerves will, motor nerves will eventually be destroyed, but not all at once, gradually over time. So when I get this patient, I want to find out what can you do? Uh, let's try to maintain what he can do for as long as we can, okay? Because eventually, he won't be able to do any of it. I'm going to get interdisciplinary care involved. I'm going to have PT, OT, speech, respiratory therapy helping. 
with all this. I know I want to prevent complications from immobility. He can't turn over. He might be able to in the beginning, but even when he's real bad, he can feel the pressure on his butt, but he can't turn over. So I'm going to have to turn him Q2 hours. I'm going to have to prevent, you know, when you're immobile, you can get constipated. He can't even poop out his stool. So I guess we're going to give him laxatives or digitally disimpact him. He can't really cough and deep breathe. He can't cough up his secretions. I'm going to have to suction him if he wants the tracheostomy tube. Uh, he can get blood clots in his legs. So I'm going to have to move his legs for him. Uh, passive range of motion and just move those legs. I'll assist with the ventilator if he wants this for his breathing. I'm going to watch for increasing dysphagia, drooling, it, and drooling, and you say drooling. Yeah, drooling, because when you can't swallow your spit because the muscles aren't working, it's going to run out of your mouth, which could lead to aspiration choking, this dysphagia and this drooling. Prepare for inserting feeding tube if he says he wants it or if the paper said he wanted it. If he doesn't want it, he doesn't want it. Provide emotional support to the client and the family. The client will eventually die from this disease. If you read in pages 389 through 390, you can see nursing diagnoses and goals and interventions to take care of this client. Okay. I've never taken care of anybody with it, but I certainly could. Okay. Because once you're a good nurse, you're a good nurse no matter where you're dropped into a situation. So to, to wrap up, ALS. Where are the symptoms? Where is the problem? The problem is in the motor neurons. The motor neurons that go to muscles. And if you were to clear this, if you can't communicate to this muscle, this muscle wastes away and weakens and thins out. And that's called atrophy. Where are the symptoms? All over the body to where he cannot move and do anything for himself ever again. And he will die of respiratory complications. These people do not live through this. Okay. So that is that. And that concludes ALS. Very sad story. Thanks.